Jason Lloyd, the athletic. Why did you guys have so much trouble guarding the three point line? Um, they had great shooters for one, but um, I just think, you know, second half we went to the blitz and you know try to mix it up on them a little bit. It was good for, for at times, and but when they have four shoes on the floor, it's hard to you know get back out the shooters. But I mean, they had it going tonight offensively, so we just try to throw everything out. We switched, we blitzed, you know, we showed, we did a little everything. So, um, you know, and they got hot. Dave, okay. David Venom in ESPN. Open-ended question: what, What's it like coaching J.R. Smith? What do you mean? Tonight he goes zero for zero in the first half. Starts off, I think, seven for eight in the second half, and then finishes zero for four. I mean, you know, he he he's a guy who can get hot. Like we know he can miss two or three, four shots in a row. He can come out and make seven in a row. So. Um, he gave us that spurt in the second half that got us back in the game, <clears throat> being aggressive. Um, thought we called his number because um, we needed, you know, a little jolt from him, and um, he came up big for us in the second half. Was that a point of discussion at halftime to no, call his I mean, number? No, I just ran a couple of plays to start the, to start the half, you know, to try to get him going, and he made some shots to kind of get us going offensively. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com, just following up on that. Did did you? Was JR still in the flow of the game in the first half, or, or did you feel like he was? I don't, at, I don't think as much. I got to watch it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not sure. Um, he might have had a couple shots that he turned down, um, but I, like I said, I got to watch. I'm not, I'm not really sure. And then um, we talked so much the last couple of days about uh, simplifying things. Did you simplify on defense as well? Uh, we simplified on offense. Um, thought the guys were a little better. Thought we could still play a little faster, especially in the half court. Um, defensively simplified it, but they just they just killed us. Um, they were good tonight, you know, shooting the basketball. I thought, you know, Will Barton came off the bench and gave him a a, a great boost, and um, they just, they played really well. You're giving a lot of credit to their shooters. It sounds like are are you happy with the way you guys scheme defensively and play defensively? I mean, I thought we did some different things. Um, some things were good, some things not so good. But we just had to keep adjusting. I thought, you know, the guys did a good job adjusting to what we try to do. Um, but they took advantage of it. I mean, they got a good a good center who can pass, who also can shoot the ball from outside. They got a lot of good cutters, you know, with Barton and, and Chandler. They got shooters all around the floor. So um, they did a good job, you know, offensively. They were scoring the basketball. I thought we scored, you know, pretty consistently, too. We just couldn't get stops. And, you know, we cut it to one and to two. We missed three layups, you know, missed a couple threes. And we had wide open to – you know, make a big shot to kind of give us some momentum, but we could make. I know, I know it's still, you haven't had a lot of time with these guys, but did you think it would be better defensively just because they're young and athletic and theoretically they should be able to fly around more and be able to get back to the three point line or recover from I mean, double We've team been losing? better. We've been better. I mean, tonight, you know, it was really bad for us, you know, giving them 19 threes, but uh, we've been better. Uh, did LeBron ask to stay in to start the fourth? Yes. Scott Sargent, WFNY, did you get the vibe at all that the defense picked up when the, the shots started falling, and especially <laughs> pers- more so for J.R. and Tristan, had you know rough first half defensively and offensively, and then they came out in the second half, both kind of picked it up on both ends of the floor? Um, I mean, I guess when, you, when you're making baskets, you also get a chance to get back and get your defense set. I thought... You know, in the first half, we missed layups or we missed threes. They got up in transition, and um, Gary Harris got a couple in the corner where we couldn't get back and get matched up. So, um, you know, when you're, getting, when you're scoring the basketball, it's easier to set your defense and get back and kind of get matched up. Marla Ridenow, Akron Beacon Journal. Does your technical have anything to do with defense? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I messed up. I think I, I touched him on accident. You're not supposed to touch him, I guess. Spencer. Ty Spencer Davies, Basketball Insiders. You mentioned that you tried everything on Denver tonight. When you showed Tristan up top in the third quarter, it seemed like the guys were scrambling a little bit back on trying to get the switches. What's the best way you can correct that? Say it again. I'm sorry. When Tristan was showing up top, it seemed that he guys were kind of confused. Blitzing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blitzing. yeah. Blitzing up top. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we blitzed Will, Will Barton and um, – if Jokic Pop was in full rotation, the Plumley roll was going coming bottom man. So, um, you know, they made some good passes, got out, 
we came a little too far at times, but that's to be expected with new guys. And they they gave the effort trying to get out there and contest, but um, they made shots. The way Nance played in the first half, um, I just wonder how, how, if you thought that was kind of his best that you've seen thus far. And did something happen to him in the second? He looked like he cramped up or something. I think he might turn his ankle a little bit okay. um, down the stretch in the fourth quarter. But yeah, I mean his energy um, is definitely infectious and. Um, you know, being able to push the basketball off breaks, you know, defensively flying around, he's I mean, been really good for us. Um, his athleticism is, is really good. I guess you'd say by now through the eight games that of the four new guys, Rodney would be the one who's, um, I, I don't know, struggling the most is the right way to say it, but he's, he would seem to be a little bit behind the other three. Could, would, do you have any thoughts on why that might be? Just got to do a better job of getting him going. You know, he's a scorer. You know, he can score in bunches. And, you know, we want him to be aggressive also. But, you know, just got to do a better job of, you know, getting him into some, some things where he can be aggressive. So, just not all on him. Tyron Potesta, the Sports Animal 1390. I noticed there were a lot of wide open threes uh, in terms of skip passes, cross court passes. Is it as easy as having someone there? before the cross-court pass happens, like if not having someone rotate over to where the ball is, but having him stay on the backside? Offensively? Or defensively. Say again, I'm sorry. Denver was getting a lot of wide-open threes courtesy of skip passes. Uh -huh. Is it as easy as having someone stay back there instead of rotating toward the ball defensively? No, I think when you're blitzing, you know, we, we come with our low man, so the bottom man's going to be pulled in to, to protect the rim, you know, first. And then when the ball skipped across the floor, we, we call it X. And so the, the top guy goes to the corner, the other guy goes up. And uh, when we were down one, we did it perfect. And then JR and George Hill kind of both went to Millsap, but they both backed up and they made a three. But instead of continuing to keep going. But, I mean, we got some good possessions and we got some possessions we got to get better at.